In our last video, we reviewed P, F, I, and N, and we had to understand their meanings in relation to a cash flow diagram. In this video, we're going to introduce a slightly more complicated variable called A. The way that I remember A is that it stands for annuity, but that's not technically correct because annuity comes from the word annual, meaning every year. And A is actually any uniform series of payments. So what does that look like on a cash flow diagram? Here's our time axis going into the future to the right. And this might be our present value, t equals 0. Some future value could be expressed to the right on the time axis. And A on our cash flow diagram looks like a uniform series. Each payment is the same, and they come at regular intervals. Well, whereas A, when it's annuity, these intervals are going to be one, two, three, four years. Each payment will be one year apart. These could also be daily, weekly, monthly. The A is going to be expressed in dollars per unit time. And it's important that this unit of time corresponds to the unit of time in the interest rate and the unit of time in the calculation of the number of compounding periods. So what does this look like when we're trying to use the equations that relate A to the other variables? P equals A, quantity 1 plus I raised to the N minus 1 over I 1 plus I to the N. In brackets, we have a term called the present worth factor in this equation. That is, P and A uh, are whatever these amounts are labeled. Then we have this more complicated equation using the interest rate and the number of compounding periods that discounts the value of this uniform series to P. It's possible that when N is infinity, we refer to that as per perpetuity. When the number of compounding periods is infinity, you'd think that P must also be infinite, but it's not. Think about the ratio here. As N goes to infinity, we get infinity minus 1 over infinity. That is, this ratio is finite even when n is infinite. And the entire thing simplifies down to p equals a over i. That's because the limit of 1 plus i to the n minus 1 over 1 plus i to the n as n approaches infinity is 1. So the numerator and the denominator cancel each other out, and we have this special case that relates an annuity to a present value or a uniform series to a present value when the number of compounding periods is infinite. 